Hi guys, it's Richard from Bagnall and Kirkwood. Today what we're going to do is looking at a Ligon BSAR12. So this is the CLX Pro version with the side lever, but it's going to be exactly the same if you've got the non-pro version with that bolt action on the back. So first thing we're going to do, remove the mag. And this one has got no pressure in whatsoever. Normally we'll remove the bottle. And you could still have pressure left in the regulator, so we're just gonna dry fire it and make sure there's no, no pressure left in, which there isn't on this one. Uh, next thing, I've already done it, but you will find underneath here, three anti-tamper screws, or anti-tamper plugs. So basically this is them here, I've already drilled them out. So a big one on the rear, which is flat, so I just counter punched that first and then drilled through and two on the front. So as you can see, I've, I've drilled through those as well. Two on the front are already counter board, so they're easier to get into. And I've just used sort of a three and a half, four mil drill bit to go through them. You're not wanting to go all the way through because underneath there's these through three screws as well. So you're just wanting to take it just enough and you can kind of get something in there and wiggle it out. Or if you've gone correctly in the middle, you can unscrew these screws and it'll pull them out as they come out as well uh, but like I say you don't want to be drilling through what I would sometimes do is put a smaller drill bit in and then go to a fatter one and just try to take the head off so you can get to the head there and unscrew so we're going to remove this plate here uh, it's going to be a two and a half mil allen key on that first on the front ones I think it's a 4mm on the rear. We'll find out in a second. Yep, 4mm on the rear. So there's the screws. If you have wrecked these, we'll do set replacements as well. That's just the cover plate. Next, we're going to remove this old... Used to be like a toaster rack on the old R10s. Used to be functional, now it's just 100% for, for looks. So it's just going to be a 3mm Allen key. So as you can see there, that's the toaster rack bit. It's going to leave that. And next we're going to remove just this whole block so it can work without being attached to the action. So that's this rear screw here. It's probably going to be... Go. So three mil Allen key again. Now we'll move the whole of the valve and regulator assembly. And also what you've got here is doughty seal. We're gonna take our new pack that we'll do for the CLX. And we're just gonna pop them down there and we can kind of size everything up as they're coming out so that one there we know it's the doughty there and we'll get rid of the old one so i'm just going to pop this action away out of the way i'm going to focus only on here um actually quickly what i will do is we'll do the o-rings on the action first so there is one on the breech seal so that's on the pellet pro pellet pro breech seal here So we're just going to kind of spike that off. So I was a two-man job, this one, to hold the, the bolt. I want to get it off and the other one on. Okay, so we snapped that last, that old one off. And we're just taking the new one out of the set. We're just going to pop that on. Like I say, this can be tricky. It's sometimes easier with two people. Then 
Det var gode tal. Now go. So boot seal now into place. The other place there are seals on this rifle. There are two on the back of the barrel here. But the only way to get the barrel out is these two grub screws plus then the transfer port which is down through this hole here but i don't know how well that the camera is going to pick it up but basically that transfer port is put in in the factory and then rammed into place so i don't know a way to get out without out without damaging it as this rifle doesn't have an issue with air coming back from this area anyway we're not going to bother replacing them I can't see that being less standard standard replace thing anyway that people are going to be doing, but they are in the kit. So we're going to put that action at one side and we're going to focus only on the main valve and regulate unit. So first of all we're going to look at the filling area. This is pretty much the same as the old R10. We've had other videos on these before, but we'll go through it anyway. So what we're going to do first of all is we're going to remove this brass bit off the end. Actually first of all we're going to remove this so we don't forget later on. If you don't remove that screw on the bottom you'll wreck this threaded retainer. It's just flat head screw over there. Get this one in. There we go. So bonded seal on the screw so again we're just going to replace that with the new bonded seal there pop that there for later on uh, now we're going to get 22 mil spanner and it's going to open the fill valve open so it's not coming off i'm going to pop that into a vise just lock that off and i'll be back in a second There we go, so just needed a little little bit of loosening. And that's the fill valve out. Interestingly, this one's showing a little bit of damage here from original installation. Uh, this is basically the bottle, bottle adapter. So the depth of how you have this pin here is how much it's opening the valve on the bottle. Uh, it's a bit of a spacer there and there's an o-ring on it so we're going to replace that one out of the kit. There we go. So we're just looking for the right size one here again. That's the one. And we're just going to pop a little bit of molly coke grease on there. Ready for when it goes back together. Next we've got underneath here another screw, this one. So we've got that 12mm spanner. Just be careful with it because it's not a standard hex type. Another right screw here. What we're going to find just carefully your unit there. And it's going to be a ball bearing. And there's an o-ring in the bottom here which we'll get out as well. Yep, so we've fished that one out there. So, taking the one out of the valve, we're going to remove the one off the here as well. The 
these O-rings are all in pretty good condition. So in here, what you've got, I'll get them out for you just to have a look. Got a spring and a spring guide. That pops in there. That sits up against that ball bearing. Pushes the ball bearing into that seal there. So we're just going to replace these ones. So we're taking the ones out of the packs. That's that one there. That pops back into there. So we're going to get where Molly coat grease. Drop that one into there. And pop it down. We'll then take that out of body seal as well. Just enough grease still on my fingers there. That's to replace that one. Pop that on. Get that one. There we go. That one nicely in the spot. And that ball bearing will just pop in place. No reason why we can't put this all back together now, but we'll just leave it. We'll leave it for now. Uh, next. We've got the gauge and we've got the valve, so we're going to have a look at the gauge first. What I'm going to do is take that off the same way as we did on the Ultra a few videos ago. What we're going to do is we're just going to tap on the gauge mount underneath here, you'll see little notches. So we're just going to use a drift and a small hammer and just carefully tap that across. So we're just going to line that up like that and just tap. So kind of moving it bit by bit, it's starting to move there. And once you get enough, you can kind of hold your finger on these brass parts and take it with you. Here. In fact, in this one, we can already see there's a bit of swarf in here. I don't know if you're going to be able to make that out on the camera. But a couple of little bits of metal. I'm going to pick this o ring out. If you're going to be able to make out that uh, a little bit of metal on the top there, but what we can do is replace that O-ring. We're just going to pop that in there already, so don't forget. Again, just a bit of molly coat and drop that in. There we go. Next. We're going to remove this whole front valve. So this is a big, big size. Just size it up so you know what size spanner to use. 32 mil. So that's generally bigger than a dusty spanner will go or anything like that. 
Um, so I'm just going to start loosening this off and I'll be back in a second. Now of course I'll just slacken that off a bit and the rest will hopefully come by hand. There we go. So just careful when you bring these apart because you've got the spacer. So you've got your main valve, the spacer, and then in here, the regulator. So normally we'll just tap that out. There we go. So you can see nothing left in, in the bottom there. And this is the regulator unit. So regulator adjuster on this side. Uh, so that's going to determine how much tension, how much pressure you're putting into that reg, what the set pressure is. So what I'd recommend before you do anything with this, on this one here and the last one I did, it was absolutely flush. So as this one is, absolutely flush as well. But I would recommend that you have a look. So sort of not only that distance there, which in this case 38.1, but if this screw here is set in at all, you maybe want to measure it. In our case, it isn't at all. I feel that that's flush. But I would recommend just setting it back to however it is, possibly on different barrel lengths uh, or different calibers that will be set differently, more in or more out. Uh, we'll start with the valve first though. So it's going to be, let me work out what size this is. Looks like a 5mm. Yep, so 5mm. I'll keep to remove the end cap. Once you've got that, there's like sort of a, a spacer seal in there. You've got your firing valve spring and your main firing valve itself, which just give it a little tap. There we go, so main firing valve dropped out there. So first thing we're going to do is we're just going to replace that small o-ring on the firing valve. Just going to carefully remove it. In fact, snap it off, it's gone to nowhere, and it's the smallest one that's in the kit. In fact, there it is. There we go, so we've got the replacement back on. The housing's got three O rings, so the biggest one. This is going to be difficult to get off with this pick. I need some uh, some stronger ones, I think. There we go. So. Largest o ring off. You can tell this rifle's relatively new because we're not having any issues. Well, we're having a lot of issues getting the o rings off. We're not having any issues with the rubber being degraded yet. And the two on the housing, they may look like they're the same, but it's a smaller one on the end and a slightly bigger one further up. There we go. So we'll just size them up from the pack. So obviously the the biggest one there. Again, a bit of molly coat on it. And we'll pop that one back on. Dead easy. Two here, let's size them up. So it's that one and that one. So I've got enough molly coat already on my fingers there. The bigger one I'm putting on first. It's going to go into that first channel, but we're just going to have to move it over. Come on. There we go, and the second one's still enough money on me 
on my fingers there. There we go. So that's both of those two there replaced. Next, we're just going to stick the valve back in. So pop the valve in. I do generally like this to make sure the seat comes through. Then the spring back on. And the house in here. So we'll just pop that through there and screw up. Just make sure that spring is aligning into the centre. As it is there. So that's the main valve done. Next, it's the regulator. So, two O rings on the outside. One off. I'll take it this way. That's those two off, and the internal regulator itself. So the back end, it's going to be looks like a four mil Allen key. So it's the adjuster, there is an o-ring on the adjuster there, see the regulator face there, but we're going to have to get to it from this side. So this isn't cut for a thread or anything like that, it's sort of on with a taper. So we've got, basically the back of this pick's got a nice little taper on which fits in, fits in there quite nicely, you can just force it in with your hand. And then it usually just on screws this one's not playing game so we're gonna have to use just a bit of tape and dowel yep so on this one i found a bit of tapered or slightly tapered four mil dowel or parallel pin just gonna force that in there just enough to grip and then it comes apart so what you're then going to find in here this white bit because sometimes fall out the front so just be careful with that what you're going to find in here is your piston so we're just going to push that out with a, a delrin rod or something like that it's not going to damage the face of that regulator So yep, just push that out. Cut the rig face there. The regulator stack itself. So the washer stack here, you can see it's eight. Eight washers, double cupped, and then double cupped again. And the piston itself. So one o-ring on this side, one o-ring here. And I can already see why this one looks like it's leaking. If you can see, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see, but the o-ring is all chewed up here. And there were bits of o-ring on the other side and it's actually there's in fact there's a bit of o-ring came out of my finger there and it's also damaged on the other side if i had to guess what had happened i would say that in the factory they've put up the, the o-ring the piston like this they've put the o-rings on and then they've just forced the belva washers over the top there and i think it's taken part of it away 
because that doesn't look to me like something that would just happen in normal normal operation so I'm going to take those washers off and I'm going to stick them just already stacked so I don't need to worry about which direction they're going or anything like that and we'll start replacing these o-rings so like I say one on this cap two on the rig piston So these two I'm going to do first, uh, because they are the same size as well. So those two are the same. So obviously these two out of the pack. And the larger one here on the piston. Go up the size up, up to that one there. So we'll just pop a bit of molly core grease on them. I'm going to put this one on after we've put the washers on. Don't want to make the same mistake that was possibly made before. So there's the washers on that o-ring over the top so I'm going to replace the other one on the plug there there we go, let's make sure there's nothing on there, all good so then we're going to replace the piston back into the regulator so drop the piston in And then we just give it a push to make sure it goes in like it does there. It seats it up, you'll feel it against the O-rings. Then the regulator face. Don't think it matters which way around this goes. I'm just going to pop that into position there. We can just loosely put that plug in first. They adjust a screw. We're going to put this one back on the back here. So I'm just going to start it off with my fingers. There we go, I felt the click. Then just use these tools just to screw that up tight. Or at least to where it goes. There we go. Now we'll go to the place, then I'm just going to screw that up to where it was. You can feel the tension start a little bit as you're compressing those springs. And this one was completely flush. Which is exactly where I've returned it to there. I'm just going to double check on the calipers as well. It was just a smidgen over 38, which is where we are here as well, so exactly the same. So then we've got left on the reg, just to replace these two outer rings with the new ones. So again, just poly coat there on your fingers. Put that on the outside. Again there. Okay, so next we're just going to pop that regulator back into place. Just drops it into the back there, silver side up. And slot it into position, just clicks down there. Then I can put the main valve back on. So that spacer sits on that side, this side here is slightly shallower than this side the longer side sits there and I tend to just hold that upside down just to make sure that that doesn't rattle around until it's sort of in position so 
So hand tight, I'm just going to go and nip this up, just give us two minutes. Okay, so lots of valve back in there. I'm going to put the gauge on, of course we'll put that o-ring in there already as well. So I'm just going to kind of screw this in, it can be fiddly, because you're trying to hold that middle insert a bit. I can feel that it's almost there. Right, right, yeah, there he is. Right, and so it's start, stop moving by friction, but I'm gonna have to give us a little couple of taps. The same way as we removed it. So I'm just gonna use the drift and line this up in the correct position. And it doesn't have to be super, super tight. It's just a case of making a little bit extra. Just a little bit extra on it. So next we're going to put fill valve back in. So drop that ball bearing in. Put the uh, thread retainer back in there as well. And use that 12 mil. 12 mil spanner. So this bit kind of need to line up so that will go into it as well. Just tend to just give it a nip until it's just slight, just biting. And then we'll pop this one in. Got to kind of hold that spacer in so that it slots into the right spot, which it has done there. And then tighten these up. And here you're going to want, or you're going to need it so that this bit here lines up so that this will go on. Just make sure it will. In this case, it will. Doesn't make any difference, we'll do this first. Just makes it a little bit easier to put on. So we'll put that retaining screw back in as well. in there so now we're going to pop the valve back into the action here so it just slides in pushes up and you'll see the valve want to push it back out a little bit so you kind of have to hold that in take this screw and that'll seat seat in the correct location line that up oh. there we go there Take my block insert again. Let's line these up. there so the o-rings we've got left the two on the barrel that we aren't going to use 
So we've got left a breach seal from a 2 2. This was a 177, so we didn't need to use the 2 2 breach seal. And we've got the buddy bottle seal, which we're going to replace now. It's dead easy. So just kind of take your old one off the bottle there. Again, with some molly cord. Go your one on. I'm just going to screw the bottle on. So that's it. Next, what we're going to do is just going to give it a fill up. We're going to give it a nice slow fill. Make sure we don't knock anything out in the regulator. Because we've been in the regulator, going to check the power on it as well. Um. I'm hoping we don't have to do anything because this is still another anti-tamper on the back here to adjust the hammer spring or you could adjust that regulator pressure to get it to where you need to be with that regulator adjustment screw um, but that's it for this one because we've resealed it so hopefully we'll see you on the next video thank you for watching